Hello, everybody. Welcome to the channel. My name is Lindsay, and this is Life with Lindsay. Today, we have a whip and chat. If you do not know what a whip and chat is, that is when I work on my current whip, WIP, which is work in progress, um, and that is currently Spirit from Dreamer Designs. Um, and you can pull out whatever it is that you are working on, whether it be another craft project or a house project. I have people tell me they listen while they're driving, while they're at work, while they're doing chores around the house, just when, it wants to, when they want to feel like they're hanging out with someone. Um, there's no right way or wrong way to whip and chat. Just, just, just do what what you guys want to do. Um, I am working on this upside down, so she is going to be staring at you the whole time. Um, if you'd like to see the unboxing for this canvas, I will leave that one up in the eye. I do not have that much left. I have this section here and then the hair that's on this side of her. Um, I do want to address something real quick before I get into my women chat. I am recording this on Mother's Day 2022. Um, so happy Mother's Day to all those who celebrate. But I'd like to take a moment to recognize those that today may be a hard day for, for those who have lost a parent, um, for those who have lost a child, for those who have strained relationships with their mothers or their, their mother figures, um, for those suffering through infertility and infant loss. Um, my heart goes out to all of you. And I know that for many people, they don't take the time to recognize how difficult of a day this can be for some of your loved ones. So um, if you know somebody who is in one of those boats or you you yourself is in one of those boats, you know, reach out um, and know that you are not alone. And so on that note, I'm going to get into my week. I hope that you guys are all having a lovely week. I am very excited. I have, let's see if you guys can see this, all of these colors right here to just in this face area. So that'll be fun. I have a slew of different pens that I'm using. If you guys ever have any questions, just let me know. Um, Although I now realize that I may have put my phone, like, in an awkward position, and I hope that I don't hit it. So, where is... There's always, like, that one color that you're like, I'm going to start with that, and then you can't find it. Or maybe you're not. Maybe you're more <laughs> organized than I am. But I am going to do this little plus size section here. Not plus size. Plus section here. Uh, my husband is in the room, so you may hear husband noises. Say, hi, husband. Hello. Um, our tiny human is very much awake right now, so you will more than likely hear her singing on the monitor. Um, she serenaded my mother-in-law this morning with, um, five little ducks. You know, they went over the hill far away. Um, yeah, can we talk about that? Like, has anyone ever, like, why do we sing this song to our kids? Because it's literally like, the mother is abandoning her ducks and being like, well, they didn't come back, we're just gonna keep going. <laughs> I still got four left. I got, and then it's like, oh, well, now I got three. But, um... Briar is very much in a singing mood, and at some point during this women chat, you will probably hear uh, me or myself telling my husband, telling my husband, telling my daughter, friendly reminder, kid, it's time to go sit on the potty. So, let's see. So, last Sunday, um, it's been, it's been, you guys, it's been, like, chaotic. Um, what color do I want to do? Not even... Do I have C? Yes. I am not loving some of these symbols. And you guys, post-review, if I can get this done in a few days, post-review will be up pretty quickly. <laughs> uh, but some of these symbols, man, some of these symbols I do not like. So last Sunday, um, my daughter decided to prove herself... Um, and to assert control and to get her way, which I just want to point out, um, I've had a couple people leave comments and or reach out to me and they're like, it sounds like your daughter has a power struggle. Yeah. Oh yeah. We know that. We just don't know how to make it not be a power struggle. Um, even when we give her the power. So I'm just going to put that out there as much as I appreciate all of everybody's kind words about the struggles that we've been dealing with. Um, you know, that, I don't want to say that's not helpful, but it's not really that helpful. Do you know what I mean? Anyway, so I had told my daughter that on Monday we'll give her a bath. Mind you, this is Sunday. So she decided, well, I'm going to pee all over the floor. That way mommy and daddy have to give me a bath. And I was like, oh no, no, no. Here, here's a wet wipe. You can wipe your legs down and you can go to sleep with your sticky pee legs and we'll give you a bath tomorrow. And um, needless to say... She did not appreciate that. I can't tell if this is a C or a G. That would be a C. All right, so let me grab um, a bigger pen here. Um, oh, I'm sorry. That was 
Saturday leading into Sunday. So Sunday we got to give her her bath. Um, sorry, I'm trying to read my notes and these blurry ass symbols. It's crazy to me. I don't know how many of you have done dreamer designs, but for how clear some of these symbols can be is exactly the opposite of how some of them can be. And I just don't understand. I don't understand how a company can make certain symbols look so amazing, crystal clear, totally legible, all of that. And then other symbols that I have to like turn off the light, um... Which, that's the fun game. You guys ever played that? Where you have to turn off your light pad and or your overhead light just to figure out what symbol you're looking at? Um, yeah. I don't like that. I don't like that at all. So, I'm so all over the place. We're like, only a couple of minutes. <laughs> uh, oh my god! I forgot to say, if you're new, hi, welcome! <laughs> I'm Lindsay. I do mainly diamond painting and other crafting-related content. Yeah, everyone's gone. They tuned out. No, um, sorry about that. If you're new here, hi. I'm not that rude all the time. Sometimes I am because life. And I'm just being honest. <laughs> I feel like I have to put this color away because I can't tell where it is. Um, but if you're if you're you're new here, hi. I'd love for you to like, subscribe, hit the bell, hop aboard that hot mess hey. express. Let's all be friends. You guys can be hot messes with me. Um, there's plenty of room on this train. If you've been here before, though, hi, welcome back. So anyway, back to your regularly scheduled whipping chat here. Um, so she got to have her bath, and then Sunday mornings we do McDonald's breakfast. And it's so funny, because she always wants something different than what she orders. And we stopped ordering the things she asked for, because she never eats it. Um, in case anyone's curious, she likes a sausage, egg, and cheese. Nope, a sausage no. and cheese. Is there an egg? No. Sausage and cheese on a biscuit. Not a biscuit, on a muffin. But we headed over to Kevin and Erica of Kevin's Creations. Um, my husband and him exchange packing material sometimes. He likes the bubble wrap and, like, the cardboard paper. I don't... The thick Butcher brown paper. paper. Butcher paper. Thank you. And then my husband likes packing peanuts, so they usually exchange. Um, if you guys didn't know, Kevin and Erica, uh, their husband-wife duo, they're real-life friends of ours. Um Butch. This is actually um, one of my Kevin's pens, which, yeah, it's a Halloween pen, but it works really well for this canvas. <laughs> so, I love this pen. Um, I'm struggling here, you guys. I should not have picked this color first. This is one of those colors that if I wasn't already in the midst of doing this while filming, I would have put this aside and come back to it towards the end. Oh, I have to sneeze. And in the power of editing, um, which... It wasn't really editing. I literally just the pause button. Um, you guys didn't get to hear it or have to hear it, depending, <laughs> depending on who you are and how you how you feel about that. It would be cooler if you would edit like a loud horn. In. Oh my <laughs> gosh! Just, I've I've tried editing certain sounds like in, and you have to get the timing just right, or like it's a mess. That's that's neither here nor there. I'm I think I'm done with this color. I hope I'm done with this color. I would like to say dislike on this color. And I hope that I have that noted um, on my post-it, wherever the hell that went. Anyway, so we went over to their house. I got to see what they were working on, um, which I got to see some upcoming, like, prizes for events and some customs. And it's really cool. If you guys haven't checked out Kevin, um, I'll leave his link down below. Uh, and I'm not saying this because I'm a friend of his. Like, I really, truly love his pens. Um, and he does do customs, which I found that out by somebody who got a custom and messaged me. And I was like, wait, this whole time he does customs and I didn't know that. So there you go. Um, Kevin has many, many years of woodworking experience. So it's really cool that him and his wife get to work together. And she does a lot of the resin work or all of the resin work, I think. And he does all of the woodworking and then he turns the pens. So yeah, um, but that was fun. We got to hang out and Briar got to see the cat one of the cats and uh you know it's just a good time it's also nice to see friends that you don't see very often because life but anyway that was that we uh went to michael's to get some paint for brian and then over her nap we noticed that she was hiding under her blanket which is never a good sign so in that moment i don't know why she put all of her clothing back on squatted onto her carpet and tried to poop the bathroom with the door open was literally like 10 foot steps away <sighs> yeah and then um i had my first and subsequently last experience 
with Papa John's. My husband was like, let's order Papa John's. And I was like, okay. I'd heard it was good. I did not care for their sauce at all. At all. But I did enjoy those garlic knots. Those were dope. Um, we live in the land of like, there's a pizza shop over here and a pizza shop over here. And most of them are not good. So I guess that's what we get. Uh, the next day was Monday. It was a nice little lazy day. Um, Brian told Briar this story about dinosaurs. In the morning, my kiddo takes her medicine and she has to wait like 10, 15 minutes before she can have any food or drink. So she usually comes into our room and like snuggles in our bed with us. And she's like, Daddy, tell me a story. And so she just laid there and looked at him, like, in awe the whole time. It was the sweetest thing ever. I couldn't even tell you any part of the story because I was just, like, mesmerized with how enamored she was with Daddy. Um, but he tells very creative stories and she really likes them. And then she'll reference them, like, months later as if we know what she's talking okay, about. I wrote it down. <laughs> as if it was, like, a real story that he didn't just make up on the fly to keep her entertained. But that's the magic of, of kids, right? You know, they love imagination and creativity and all that stuff, but they don't realize, like, that story didn't come out of a book. That story wasn't, like, a lifelong fairy tale or a Disney movie. It was literally just a story in Daddy's head about dinosaurs to keep you entertained for ten minutes while we wait for your meds. Um, but it was so it was so sweet. And, uh... I'm having some issues over here, you guys. If you ever hear me get, like, totally silent when I'm like either filming or live it's because i'm super concentrating which does not make for entertaining videos but it's only a few seconds or whatever um and we finally got to do the the project bag from her teacher from the previous bag we still never got a chance to finish it it was like a crazy fight with how do i explain this there was all these letter games in it, and she, for a kid who knows her letters, she didn't seem to know any of her letters. And I was like, I don't know if my kid is distracted, and that's why she doesn't know them, or if she's really struggling with them. But either way, it's my job as her parent to make sure that if she is struggling, that I'm getting her as much help as she can. And I emailed her teacher, and her teacher was like, oh, well, they're not really, like, they don't need to know this um, now it's just, you know, a project we were working on. And I was like, okay, well, that makes me feel a little bit better. The letters of her name by Kinder. Yeah. And, um, you know, it's crazy. I remember like before I had a kid or like even when Briar was like a little baby, people would talk about like, does my kid need to know this by kindergarten? And I was like, oh my God, why wouldn't your kid know that by kindergarten? And now I'm like, okay. But she knew all her letters by like three. Yeah, it just, it was like the sight of the letters that she was confusing herself, but it also turned into a fight, which then <sighs> everything got amped and it was like, all right, you know, um, but so I emailed her teacher and that made me feel a lot better, but I kind of took a step back and I was like, okay, because originally I was like, I'm not moving on to the next day's activity because we get a, there's a folder and it has five days worth of activities because typically if you see your therapist once a week. You would have the school days in between, and then obviously you don't count the weekends. I mean, you can if you want, um, but I was trying to do them in order because I thought that's the way it was supposed to happen. And she's like, oh, you can just skip that if it's not working. So I tried doing it a little bit differently, and it, and it worked. Um, but now we're back to putting her on the potty every 30 minutes, setting an alarm, um, <sighs> trying to see if that works. The difference between, I think one of the main reasons my child is not potty trained and I know there are some people that are probably like sick of hearing this but you know especially because there's so many people that are like I did it in a weekend I didn't I didn't do it in a weekend I didn't do it in a month I didn't do it in a year I I didn't I didn't and uh that's okay that's totally okay and if you didn't do it in a weekend or in a week or a month or a year that's also okay um is this really all the color I have left god that's the one thing I will say about Dreamer Designs. Anybody else have that? Where you constantly feel like you're going to run out of a color? Or is that just me? Um, part of it is I can't tell, like, how much I have in here versus on there, but it looks very different. Um, but I got a call from... Oh, the reason... I, let me... I got sidetracked. Um, the reason I think that Briar is not potty trained yet, even though she's fully aware and fully capable is she is not self-motivated 
to go on her own. And I don't mean that she can't because she can, but most of the time, if we don't tell her, okay, I need you to go sit on the potty, she'll tell us till she's blue in the face. I don't have to go potty and then she'll pee because she's so distracted. But we got a call from um, a local therapist. We had put calls into a couple places and they called me back and they let me know that not only do they not have any openings, they also have no waiting list. Um, and they don't foresee being able to even open the waiting list until late summer. I don't need to wait until right before my kids start school to even be put on a waiting list. I'd like her to be seen by somebody before she steps foot in a classroom. Call me crazy. Um, which, if you guys didn't know, my kiddo is enrolled in pre-K for the fall. I had to do a lot of persuading because she is not potty trained. I do live very close, so I've let them know, like, if she does have an accident... I can always come and help. However, one of my biggest fears as, as her mother is that it's going to happen continuously because she's so distracted with school itself that they're going to say it's too much of a hassle and um, have us not bring her back. That's whether it's legitimate or not, it is a fear of mine. So um, it was a little bit of a bummer to hear that this local place didn't have any openings, but it is what it is. And then we notice that our kiddo is chewing on her hands again. If anybody else out there has a kid that likes to chew their hand, and I don't mean like biting her nails. I mean, literally like the pats of her fingers here, the side of her wrist, uh, the tops of her fingers. She'll put like the whole fingers in her mouth. Um, I got some recommendation for some wearable like jewelry from a friend of mine, but I... There's so many options out there that I don't really know what's best. And I don't want to end up... Like, if I'm going to get her jewelry, which is wearable, like, chewable jewelry, I want it to be something that, like, call me crazy, but doesn't look like my kid's wearing a chew toy. Uh, you know? Um, but the problem is, a lot of these... Like, I got a link for, like, a vibrating carrot, basically. It's like a teething toy. But the problem is, if my kid is doing something somewhere else or it's not on her, it's going to do me no good, which is why I think the jewelry will work because if it's already around her neck, she can just chew on it. Um, but anyway, next day we went ice skating. We have a new baby in class. I want to tell you guys, baby, this little girl is not even two years old. She is so cute and so, like, she has the body of a toddler. Like, she's very tall. Um, but she still has that, like, baby face with those big baby cheeks. Like, oh, my gosh, she's so cute. And I was really shocked that this little one stayed out there. We've had a little guy in our group before that was um, very, very young. But it took a lot of coaxing to get him out and a lot of coaxing to keep him on the ice. This little girl, she stayed out there the whole time. Um, she has an older sibling that figure skates and <laughs> kept wanting to go out on the ice during uh, Big Sister's lessons. And so the mom was like, look, you can all let you ice skate. You just have to learn how to stand and get up on your own first. And... Um, you know, it's one of those things that not every kid is mature enough to do this uh, at a young age, which is why they don't typically open it up to kids under three. But they obviously make an exception if they think it'll work, um, which she was so cute. But the best was one of the little girls in our group, her brother was there that day and it was his first time ice skating. And oh my gosh, the sibling rivalry was real. Like she would do a twirl and he would look over at her and he'd be like, well, I'll do two of them then. Or he would skate really fast and she'd be like, well, I'm going to race you. It was so funny. And his, and their dad was saying like, she's super competitive about everything. Like literally she'll be like, I breathe better than you. And the only thing he's competitive about is his sister. Like he's not a competitive kid at all. Um, and he was funny because he's like, he's going to be really bummed next week when he has to go back to school. I guess he had a day off and he can't come, you know, <laughs> hang out on the ice. I think this one here. Let's put you there. Um, but it was so funny. We went to Wegmans. So there's two Wegmans in our area. And I say in our area in like air quotes because both of them are like 30, 40 minutes away. Um, grab some water. But one of them had, like, a full sit-down restaurant. Turns out it's the other one, not the one we went to. So my husband was like, well, why don't we just go to Wegmans? We can pick up some groceries. We can eat lunch here. If you guys don't know what Wegmans is, it's, like, a super nice uh, supermarket. But the Wegmans, the other one that we didn't go to, actually has, like, a full sit-down restaurant. They also have, like, a hot bar. So if you want to get, you know, they have Chinese food or they have... Am I doing this right color? Yeah. Um, 
chicken wings, things like that. They have like a hot buffet bar that you can get like a to go container um, and eat that. And so that's what we ended up doing. Briar got some chicken chicken fingers. Um, Brian and I each got a salad. I think he also got yeah he did grab a sandwich because she seemed sandwich. she seemed more interested in sharing Daddy's sandwich um, than the chicken fingers she had asked for. But I love Wegmans. They have a lot of really good like oven ready meals. Like it literally in the tin that you put in the oven, and you just take the plastic off and cook it for however long it says. Um, but you know. It was a little lackluster this time for me, but we had a good time, got what we needed. Um, we very rarely go to supermarkets. Like, we have not done a family supermarket run for, like, full groceries this year. We've done grocery pickup orders. We've done grocery delivery orders. We've gone to the store to get, like, one or two things, but not, like, a full load at all. Uh, so that was, you know, five months. Um... Oh, man, now I feel like my nose is running. So I apologize for sniffling in your ear. Um, but after that, we decided to play a little t-ball. It was a beautiful day. The weather here has been very weird. Um, it is currently March, I'm sorry, May 8th. And the weather hasn't been consistently nice enough for me to put my outdoor my house plants outdoors yet. Um, yesterday was only in the 40s. Today is in the 50s, but I need it to be consistently nice. Doesn't have to be dry, but consistently warm enough that I can put these plants outside and not freeze them to death. Um, but she saw a little guy on his scooter and she's like, I have a scooter. And she has a scooter with like a fold down seat. It's the funniest thing. And she was so excited and she scootered around the neighborhood. Um, we pulled out our balance bike after like two years. And we're not 100% sure if it's too small for her or not. But here's the thing. If it is too small for her, we need to get her a new bike. But also, like, I don't think she's that interested in learning how to ride a bike. Um, which is fine. Like, I, that doesn't bother me. My thing is, do we just go and get a bigger size balance bike? Because the whole point of the balance bike is to teach them the balance and totally skip all training wheels and then just go from that bike to a two-wheeled bike? Or do I just say, screw it, let's get a training wheels bike? I don't know. I have no idea. Somebody let me know. <laughs> um, the next day was Wednesday. It was a very, very busy day. This was the first mommy and me day of the week. Um, my husband, if you guys have not heard, my husband has like a huge order right now. Like a huge order. And um, sometimes... I will take the kiddo on days that I have something to do or that, you know, she has an appointment, I have an appointment, and that way he can stay home and get extra time to work. So that's what I did. And I took her, we had kinder music, <clears throat> excuse me, together. Um, we went to a restaurant. If you guys are ever in the Hershey area, I highly recommend the Hershey Pantry. They've got really good breakfast and lunch. But I will tell you, I learned this this week. The parking lot is not necessarily an indication of how busy they are because I pulled into the parking lot and it's next to a hotel and there was n like one parking spot and I was like, ooh, this isn't looking good. And I walked up and there's nobody waiting. So I was like, oh, okay. I took ki the kiddo in. There was not a wait at all. There was like three tables full. I'm like, where did all these cars come from? I feel like the pantry is one of those places where people will come to meet for like a large party. Or, like not like a party party, but like a larger table and everyone drives independently. I don't know why. Don't ask me, but that's what it is. She kept playing with the salt and pepper and she was talking about how pepper makes you sneeze because she's seen, you know, every cartoon does that. And she thought it was hilarious. So she's like putting the pepper on the table and then like fake sneezing. And then she was licking the, the salt off the table. And I was like, kid, if you want salt and pepper, just put it, put it on your plate. Don't put it on the table. That's weird. Um, but it was really funny. And then um, we went to the chiropractor or the doctor proctor, as she calls it. I got to meet the new chiropractor. He was super nice. He was very effective. He had one of those little um, like desktop I don't want, uh, fountain, I guess you could call it. Um, if you know what I'm talking about, you probably know exactly what I mean. Um, but it has like rocks and there's a little bit of water and it just keeps going down and then it cycles back up to the top. It's not very big. It's like meant for your desk. Briar was totally fascinated by that, but it was 
May 4th, so they had all this Star Wars stuff out, and Briar was all excited about the lightsaber. She took it off their window, and she was, like, wielding it around. She's like, I want this to protect myself and to keep people away. And I was like, yeah, let's not, let's not do that. Because if, you know, their patients come in, they probably don't need a four-year-old wielding a giant lightsaber at them. I I'm just going to go out on a limb. But the girls there, they all get a kick out of Briar. And they had said to me a while ago, how can we never see her anymore? And I was like, well, because you guys keep scheduling me for appointments at two o'clock, which is her nap time. So it worked out well for this being the day that I was going to take her and my husband was going to get stuff done because I had already planned to take her with me to the chiropractor. Um, so it just worked out well. But when I tell you guys this was a long day, like it was a long day. Um, the rehab specialist built an obstacle course with Briar while, while I was on the decompression table. Briar likes to help push the, the pedal to raise the table. She really likes to be involved. Obviously, they're not going to have her being involved in, like, my adjustments or anything like that because, well, that wouldn't be good. But she loves going, and the girls get a kick out of her. And then after we went to the doctor practor, as Briar calls it, um, we went home. Oh, no. We didn't. We went to Five Below. And I had given her a $10 limit. And, you know, immediately walked in. She wanted these um, cheerleader, the pom-poms. And I was like, okay. So she grabbed that and something else. And I was like, you have X amount left to spend. And she just looked at me and she was like, okay. And I said, we can always put something back if you don't want. You're not committed to these just because you grabbed them. You know, we can find the right thing for you. And she ended up deciding she wanted two $5 stuffed animals instead of the chalk, the pom-poms, I think bubbles was the other thing that she grabbed. Um, and, you know, she still doesn't understand, like, the value of a dollar, which I wouldn't expect at four she would. But she is understanding that, you know, there's limits. And she's understanding it in a really helpful way. Um, but then we went home, um, and after her nap, we had a 6 p.m. t-ball game. 40 minutes away from our house, literally could not get the coach to give us an actual address for this place. He sent a screenshot from the terrain view on Google Maps and put a circle and said, this field. Oh, okay, cool. How do I get to said field? Um, and like, it was behind some Italian restaurant, but it, when we got there, if I had just gone by, oh, it's behind this Italian restaurant, I would never have found it because it was not, like, an easy, oh, yeah, it's right behind the restaurant. So, um, but this field, uh, we get there, and there are all these people out there with rakes and shovels, and I was like, well, Brian's like, this field looks like it probably hasn't been used in two years. Turns out the field has not been used in two years. Why this wasn't taken care of, I don't know, previous to the game is beyond me. But if you guys have been following along, my kiddo every week has been progressively doing more in terms of like being out in the field. Um, I don't care how well she does when she's out there at all. Like, I don't care if she's not even engaged. I just want her out in the field uh, because you can't just sit on the bench when your whole team is out in the field and then you go out to bat because that's the thing you like to do. Totally understandable. She's four years old. That's her mentality. You know, she also kept telling us, well, I'm not very good at it. I'm like, well, of course you're not good at it because you're not doing it. You have to do the thing to be good at the thing. So we had gotten her her own bat at Walmart. Um, they don't have a lot of smaller bats, um, like with her team. So we got her, I think it's the smallest size T-ball bat they make. Um, but she was out there and she batted. And she was out in the field every single time. Now, when I say she was out in the field, I literally mean, like, in the field. She wasn't even playing outfield. Like, she was rolling around in the grass, collecting handfuls of dandelions. And not even, like, the dandelions with flowers, but the dandelions that, like, you can, like, blow the heads of them and they sprinkle off. But I'll put a picture up here of this is what my kiddo looked like on that day. I took the same socks and I just made it go from a Star Wars outfit to a T-ball outfit. Um, she was the only girl between the two teams. Um, but let me tell you, a 6 p.m. T-ball game with her that far away from home was not great because, you know, we weren't going to eat dinner at 
4.30, 4.45. It just didn't make sense for us. So we ended up bringing a, an Uncrustable for her. I threw it in my bag. And then when it was over, she goes, can we have a picnic? And I said, uh, no, baby girl, we can't. She just looked at me. Why not? And I go, well, you're the only one that has food. It like blew her mind. Like, what do you mean I'm the only one that has food? Well, I'm sorry, mommy and daddy don't have, you know, ready to go snacks for us. Um, but she was funny. There was a porta potty there, and my husband's like, yeah, we're not going to use that. Um, in general, I'm not a huge fan of porta potties to each their own, but. Bill like, hasn't been touched in two years. How long has it been? Right, since? right, right. But also, like, there is 0% chance that I'm going to fit into a porta potty with my child. There's probably a really high likelihood I wouldn't be able to fit comfortably into a porta potty on my own. So we have a portable potty in the back of our car, and I was like, nothing like having your kid pee and everybody stopping to watch. <laughs> it is what it is. But um, I let her know that. Um, if you can keep your underwear dry for an entire week, that was Wednesday, and we are currently on Sunday, that you, I will take her back to her play place that she likes to go to. My biggest concern, and it's a valid concern, is that if we're going to a place that's meant for children to play, and she pees all over the floor, that's, you know, like, it's one thing to be like, oh, let's just mop up the floor. But any toy that was around it has to be sanitized and or thrown away. Like, it, I don't want to make their jobs more difficult because my child isn't potty trained. I would never put that responsibility on someone else. But I told her things like going to the trampoline park, going to the play place. All of these things are things that we could do when you wore a diaper, but you don't wear a diaper. So these are the steps we need to take in order for you to do them again. And I think that kind of sparked something for her. Um, and she's like on a mission now. So um, Thursday, my husband had planned on taking Briar shopping with him to go get something for Mother's Day, to pick out a card, to do whatever it is that they were going to do. And literally, like, minutes before he's ready to walk out the door, he's like, I have a family emergency. I have to go take care of my dad. And I was like, absolutely. Do what you need to do. Um, and without getting into detail, my my father-in-law is fine. Um, but in that moment, my husband, he did the right thing. He went with his dad. He ended up going to the ER with his dad. And if you've ever had to be in an emergency room for literally anything, it is not a speedy process. So this ended up being another mommy and me day, which was totally fine. Um, you know, it's just funny that like how things change so quickly. Ooh. Ooh. Don't put that away yet, Lindsay. Let me just make sure there's nothing else before I finish putting that away. Ooh, ooh. Okay. Um, so, so, let me get some more water. Uh, oh, man, I am quite thirsty today. And I'm not sure why. Um, so, it was funny. The night before, Brian was like, what do you think we should do? Where do you think we should go, you know, to get Mommy a gift? Um, and mind you, I was not expecting them to get me anything. But he's like, look, let's get you, like, you know a sweet treat or something little from the market or Walmart or something like that, you know, that she could help pick out and have pride in giving that to mommy. And I was like, okay. So she's like, I think we should go to the Disney store. <laughs> and my husband's like, Oh, do you? And she's and like, she, this morning it was Michael's. Well, that was the other thing she said to me. So she said the Disney store. And he's like, I think you want to go to the Disney store. And she's like, well, yeah, but I think mommy, I think mommy would want something from there. And I was like, okay. And then she goes, I think we should go to Michael's. And when we go to Michael's, there's two things that she likes to do. Hug all the chunky yarn. Um, and when I tell you, like, literally, we'll walk by, like, the end caps, and she'll be like, chunky yarn, and have to hug it. But also, every Michaels that we've been to has those, like, racks of Beanie Babies and stuffed animals by checkout. And she just wants to hug them. And I think that she thinks that the more times she hugs them, eventually we'll just buy them all for her. But honestly, like, if you're content with hugging them, kid, you don't realize that um, that's what's going to happen. I'm going to make sure that you just hug them. Anyway, so um, it was funny because she was so adamant about that. And um, I just thought that was funny. But we spent the day together. We have a Tiana that we got um, the day we went to the Disney store and got her her tramp for going poop on the potty. 
my husband and I bought this, like, super articulated Tiana that has, like, all this. She's, like, a ballerina Tiana, which is weird because she's not in any ballet outfit at all, but she has ballet shoes on that match. But it's like a Barbie. It has different outfits and accessories, so she was excited that she got to play with the Tiana and change her from the lily pad dress to the waitress dress and back and forth. And it came with a plate of beignets. If you've never seen Princess and the Frog, I highly recommend. I feel like it's such an underrated Disney movie. Um, it's absolutely... One of the best soundtracks. It's such a great story about a fiercely independent woman. Um, if you guys are going to hear, my husband's going to tell the kiddo to go potty. Um, perhaps if that stopped. Stop. Anybody else have a Google Home that like doesn't ever want to stop? Like we'll set an alarm and it just never stops. So um, she wanted to watch the movie with her Tiana, and I was like, sure, we can watch the movie. Can we go potty? Sorry, guys. And so she's going to go run off. She's in her room. She's going to run off to the potty by herself, wash her hands by herself, and then go back into her room. Um, and a lot of times after, like, I'll tell her to give me a thumbs up, and she'll just look right at the camera. <laughs> anyway, so um, Princess and the Frog is one of those movies that anytime it's a movie day, which we do movies when it's, like, cold, really cold, or raining, or just gross weather in general, um, because, you know, you can't go play outside if it's freezing rain, um, but we watched Princess and the Frog, bust out some popcorn, she had a really, really nice time, um, and then she started, she helped me make some lunch, I did some ravioli, like, not handmade, they were, you know, from a container, but she got to help me put them in the pot, she's really having more interest in helping in the kitchen, which you know, is great sometimes, but also, like, <gasps> that's daunting, you know, and, um, she just, she was just really very helpful, but I had given her a snack pack, and she took all the cheese and started mushing it together, and I was like, why don't we pull out the Play-Doh? Obviously, she's looking for some kind of, like, tactile input, so we did that, um, and then my husband came home, and, um, Actually, I had, during her nap time, I crashed. I crashed super, super hard. And then my mom called me. I love my mom. I love my mom dearly. Please tell me you guys have parents like this. She called and she goes, oh, did I catch you at a bad time? And I'm like, no, it's okay, mom. I was, I was sleeping. And she's like, oh, talk to me for a few minutes, like enough to wake me up and then be like, okay, well, I'm going to let you sleep. And I'm like, well, no, I'm not going to sleep, mom. You literally called. Like if you had called for 30 seconds and been like, oh, you know what? I'll call you later. I would have been like, okay, and gone back to sleep. But um, it was it was just one of those days, and I totally fell asleep, and I missed most of my sister's live. If you guys didn't know, my sister is a jewelry reseller. Um, like, this is one of her rings. Um, I've got a couple pieces of her jewelry. And she does lives every Thursday night on YouTube, and I help moderate them. I know absolutely nothing about jewelry except... Uh, what I like and the fact that almost nothing off the shelf fits me because I've got fat fingers, I've got big wrists, I've got a big neck, um, earrings are my friend, um, and I actually claimed a pair of earrings and she's like, you want these? And I was like, I sure do. I don't know if you guys are crystal folks or not, but I am really into citrine recently. Citrine is a very happy stone. It's a... <sighs> I, I like it. I like its metaphysical properties. It's just something about it. Um, so. Good job, Beanie Jean. So this is what our day is like. We've we've extended the telling her to go potty from every 30 minutes to like every 45-ish minutes. And the next time we'll tell her to go potty, in case anyone's curious, it'll be when we get her out of her nap in about 45 minutes. But um, the next day was Friday. So Friday was a super chill day. Um, we had her head teacher in the house who, I think I mentioned this in my last whipping chat. Um, her head teacher is pregnant. Um, and it's funny, she's like, you guys probably noticed. And, you know, I don't know about you guys, but I am of that rule of thumb. You never say to anybody anything about them being pregnant unless they have explicitly told you. Because there are some people who are, you know, however many days, weeks, months postpartum. And they still have the shape of the belly and... That can be triggering or 
that's just the way their body looks or it's been a rough day. So, you know, I obviously wasn't going to say something and, and I noticed my husband didn't notice at all. She, she did a good job of, uh, like keeping her sweater over her belly and things like that. But because of that, my daughter, when her reevaluation is set to happen, she'll be on maternity leave. So she's actually going to do it early so that, um, she can be the one to assess my daughter as opposed to a stranger who's never met with or worked with my child. Um, so, you know, obviously I'm very grateful for that, but I'm excited. So over the summer, at least where I am, I can't speak to anybody else who has their kid in an early intervention or intermediate unit program, but where we are, they offer a summer school program and it's not even like a summer school. So it's basically, especially for kids who have been seeing their providers in a classroom setting. We have an at-home setting for two of our three providers. Um, and the third one is technically, I don't know what they call it because it's in her office, but it's not in a school and it's not in our house um, because our kid is not in a classroom. So she is going to pair my kiddo up with another kid this summer to have like combined lessons excuse me, so that the kids can still learn what they need to learn without completely regressing. But they've lifted like a lot of these COVID restrictions now. So they can put my kid with another kid, which they haven't been able to do in a couple years now. Um, and that will be great because then my daughter will be able to work on some of the things she hasn't been able to work on, like social language skills. Um, but we got a new book. I don't know if you guys have ever read Pete the Cat, but there was a little guy that we used to have at Kinder Music, and he was such a quiet little kid. But oh my God, every time they would read Pete the Cat, this kid just like lit up. And my it was like my husband's favorite part. When, like whenever he saw that we were going to be reading the Pete the Cat and that little boy was there, he's like, yes. Because he was so excited. Every time the little kid would be like, yeah, it's all good. It's just, it's such a cute little story. So we got the Pete the Cat book. Goodness, no. Goodness, no. Um, and let me tell you, not all Pete the Cat stories are the same, but this is the white shoes. In case anybody wants to get one for a small human in their life, uh, highly recommend. Two thumbs up. Two thumbs up. Um, let's see. Do, 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 do. Um, but I hope that we get to keep our services because, you know, a reevaluation is good in terms of making sure that, like, they're giving her her proper needs for her IEP. But it's also when they decide, like, oh, yeah, she's met these IEP goals. Um, I think for Briar, even though she truly doesn't need all of the services to the extent that she's getting them anymore, there are certain things that they can't measure because she's not in a classroom. They cannot measure her social skills and her social language skills because it's literally her and an adult, and that's it. Um, and they know that. And um, so I'm hoping... That it goes our way, but, you know, you never know, and it does make me nervous, but I don't want to put the cart before the horse. Um, let's see. And she did tell us, like, if, if Briar remains in her care, they can actually write into the IEP to have the teachers remind her to use the toilet. Um, because until my kiddo can be considered fully potty trained if she keeps everything dry... But it doesn't do anybody any good if she, the only reason she's staying dry is because somebody's telling her to use the toilet and then nobody does that when she's in the classroom. So I was like, well, that's good to know because, you know, I don't want to make it the responsibility of the teachers to have to clean up after my child. I think it's a lot easier to just say, okay, Briar, it's time for us to use the potty. Um, every, like every single time that we tell our kid to use the toilet, every single time she uses it. Um, which also tells me she's not emptying her bladder, but that's a different story. Like, it could be literally every 30 minutes all day long and she'll still use the toilet. So, it's, you know, quite interesting. Um, but it's so weird to think that Briar's going to be in pre-K in the fall. Um, so weird to me. Oh, this was the day that we watched the movie with Tiana. Oh, well, you know, mixing my days up. Um, but we also paused the movie every 30 minutes so that she would see that, like, you're not going to miss anything. That's, like, one of her biggest things is she just doesn't want to miss anything. And I keep telling her, like, nobody's going to steal your toys while you're in the toilet. So a lot of times, like, it, the, the juice isn't worth the squeeze on this one. But, like, a lot of times now she'll be like, well, I'm taking this with me to the bathroom. Okay. Just go go to the bathroom. Go wash your hands. Um, so she did. Um, 
But we are officially on a waiting list for a behavioral assessment in Baltimore. And it's really kind of interesting. They had us fill out the survey. And then every day they send you a text message at the end of the day so that you can rate your child's behavior for the day so that they have some sort of, of data. You know, it's they're not asking me why I'm giving my kid those ratings. They're just asking me to rate it. And then they have stuff on hand. My husband is one of those people that if you give something on a scale of 1 to 10, 1 and 10 don't exist. You can always have something worse than the lowest possible score, and you can always have something best than the possible, the best possible score. Um, so it's interesting. We've had a couple good days, so that's been really great in terms of, like, her rating. Um, but I know in the back of my mind, and I'm sure in the back of Brian's mind, like, we're both kind of just waiting for that other shoe to drop because... It's never consistently good for a long time. Like, we'll get a couple days of really good behavior, and then it's just, like, pew, behavior explosion. Which I think is totally normal, no matter who your kid is, what their circumstances are. Um, and then I finally got to sit in diamond paint. I hadn't diamond painted in a couple days. Um, just I don't know. I was just tired. I was just exhausted mentally, physically, emotionally. Um, what color do I want that's not... An AB. I almost said an OB. Nope, that's a different thing. Where's the E? E. Number five. Bumps, 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 bumps. Okay. I know that I had this. Oh, here it is. <laughs> it's right here. I have to say, these stickers suck. <laughs> no offense to Dreamer Designs, but like, they suck. I've had to write on so many of these containers what they actually are because they keep peeling off. Like, here's a good example. Um, you can, see, sorry, I have to block the, I put the number, the symbol, the DMC code, and then I had to put this directly on the container because it wasn't staying on here, but some of them are, are not even staying on the container. Uh, it's just very strange. So Saturday, um, Brian and one of our friends went to go do, do stuff. <laughs> Um, he wanted to go to a couple like comic book stores, stores that sell pops, memorabilia, things like that to see if he could find a couple more pops for this, this custom order that he's doing. If you guys didn't know, there are 80 pops in this order. So, um, while he has a lot of the figures on hand for the majority of his customs, um, he doesn't have all of them. And some of them it's, he doesn't know exactly what he's looking for. He just knows the characteristics he's looking for, like a sleeveless dress or, you know, um, jeans, whatever it may be. Uh, there's always, it's so much easier to add on to a custom than it is to remove parts from a pre-existing pop. So I was like, yeah, go ahead. Um, he wanted to do that a different day and it just didn't work out. So the two of them went and they were out for a while, um, which was to be expected. And so I was like, it is another day with me and the bean. <laughs> this week she got a lot of one-on-one -on -one time. And I honestly wonder if that's why some of her behavior has been as good as it is. Because she's so much better when she's just one-on-one -on -one with one of us versus both of us. And it's it's same thing if she's one-on-one -on -one with daddy versus one-on-one -on -one with me. Um, it's not just like, oh, my preference is. Because her preference, if you were to ask her most of the time, her preference is daddy. Um, and that's totally fine with me. <laughs> like, when I say that's fine, that's fine. I just don't like when she tells me, I don't like you, mommy. I like daddy more than you. Daddy's nicer than you. Like that kind of stuff hurts. And I know it shouldn't because she's just four, but words hurt, friends. Um, but in general, like, oh, just like choked on myself. If we're both sitting on the couch, for example, and she's like, daddy, will you play with me? I'm not gonna be like, how dare you not ask mommy? Like, I'm like, okay, she wants to play with daddy. Like, it's totally cool. So um, her and I had some fun we um did the craft food project from the previous bag from the rainbow fish bag we took marshmallows put blue icing on them it called for graham crackers and goldfish i bought the graham cracker goldfish so that i smushed up some of the graham cracker goldfish and used that as my graham crackers and then i used the goldfish themselves to put them on um, and I'll put a photo here of what they look like. I'm pretty sure I took a photo. If not, reminder to Lindsay to go take a photo. Um, but it was a lot of fun. She got to do the project and we got these ridiculously big marshmallows. So I said to my husband, we need to get like Rice Krispies or something to make Rice Krispie treats with the rest of them because holy moly, you guys. Um, I mean, s'mores on next Saturday night. Dude, these are huge oh, though. Know. I know. These are huge. Um, like when I tell you guys, they're like, like they're, inch inch. they're, they're huge. Good. 
Um, they're like the size of my kid's fist. I was going to say mine, but no, not that big. Um, she ended up having like blue icing all over her face. It was so much fun. She had, she was so messy. Um, and then our, so we have an audio monitor and a video monitor. And you guys heard Brian talking to her over, he was using the video monitor to communicate with her, but I have, I have the audio monitor right here so you can hear it. So we had the audio monitor when she was itty bitty because if she cried, that's all we cared about. We we had we ran in to see what she was crying about because she wasn't going anywhere as an infant. You know what I mean? Um, whereas now we kind of want to make sure that she's not um, getting herself into trouble or in harm's way. So I texted my husband and I was like, I, I know you're not home yet, but can you see if you can get the camera to work? They work on Wi-Fi. I thought maybe there was an internet issue and... He's like, it won't work for me. I'm like, cool, 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 cool. So she's like making all these noises. And like at one point I told her to use the bathroom. And then she's like, I already did. And I'm like, oh. And then I was like, did you wash your hands? She's like, mommy, I'm sitting on my bed. And I'm like, oh, I can't see you, kiddo. So she had called me down for something. I don't remember what the first time was. Um, and then I realized, um, because I had given her a bath, that... I needed to do more laundry because um, apparently we go through tiny human underwear very, very quickly. Even if she's not having accidents, it's just like, oh my gosh, I have to wash it again. You know, it just, it is what it is. <laughs> it's, it's not a surprise. Other people have to deal with the same thing. Um, but my husband came home and the timing of him coming home was not great for him because literally, oh shoot. I totally realized there's a whole chunk of these I forgot. Um, my daughter was yelling on the monitor, Mommy, Mommy, I need help. And I'm like, oh my God, baby girl, what's wrong? She's like, Mommy, Mommy, I'm stuck. I need help. So, of course, I can't see her. I'm like, what are you stuck on? She's trying to tell me that thing on my bed. I'm like, cool, all right. So I rush down to her room. I open the door and immediately she pops off her bed and goes, oh, hi, Mommy. And I go, oh, hi, Briar. And she's like looking at me and I'm looking at her. And I'm like... Turns out, my husband just happened to come home right at the time where I had gone to check on her and swapped the laundry over. So I was annoyed that I came downstairs to check on my kid when absolutely nothing was wrong. Nothing was wrong. There was no stuck. I still think she was just saying because she wanted mommy to come down, um, which, you know, I would have known if I could see that on the monitor. And of course, the monitor comes back up like at the very last like three minutes of her nap. And I was like, cool, 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 cool. Thanks. Thanks, monitor. Um but she was a hoot. And again, this was another day of being like super good. Um, so after her nap, we had that bath, which is what prompted me to do more laundry. Um, and then just like quick question. At what age do you guys independently let your child bathe? Um, Briar does what I call the mermaid. She gets the shampoo in her hair and then lays, submerge herself in the water and then just waves her hair back and forth until there's no more shampoo in it. Great. So we're trying to let her have, excuse me, her independence, but, you know, she'll put in the shampoo and then, like, immediately put her head in the water. I'm like, girl, you got to let it sit for a second. Or, like, you got to let, you got to rub the soap off. You can't just, like, lay in the water and expect the soap to clean yourself. Um, but just, I'm, I'm truly asking for myself here, like, at what age do you guys let them independently bathe? But our kid has an uncanny ability to remember details um, from times past. And what I mean by that is I had said to her the last bath she had, which was just like a couple days earlier, that she's starting to get too big for her towel. She has one of those like hooded bathrobe towels, but we've had it since she was an infant and it's meant for infants and it like barely covers her butt now. And she goes, well, we have that pink one we got from Target when we got the footstool. This is the footstool we got when we started letting her independently use her bathroom um, months, months ago. And I was like, we sure do. And I knew exactly where it was. So my husband brought that up. She had her lovely little bath. And then um, after her bath, I had said to my husband, I don't know why, but I really want to go to the real Taco Bell. Get Mexican. And also, total side note, I didn't actually eat any lunch that day because our oven took forever to preheat. I gave her like a mac and cheese cup. 
But I was going to make some empanadas from Trader Joe's. And by the time the oven preheated, I was no longer interested in sitting there for a half hour after I put her down for a nap. Like, I just wanted to come up and diamond paint. and um, So I was hungry. And so I had said to my daughter, listen, I know this is really hard for you to understand, but I'm going to need you to be flexible. If we go to restaurant A and it doesn't work, then we're going to have to go to restaurant B because she has a tendency to have it like hyper fixate on it and then melt down because we didn't get to go to the restaurant we told her we were going to. I know that this is not like super atypical behavior, but I didn't want to deal with it. So I, I prompted her and I prepared her ahead of time. So we pull up to the Mexican restaurant. Oh my God, it's five o'clock and every, every single parking spot in the, in the lot is full. Every single one. Now it did dawn on me. It is the weekend of Cinco de Mayo. It is also Mother's Day weekend. So, you know, that was one thing, but, um, obviously that wasn't going to work. So we scooted over to another restaurant. I walked into the lobby and there were so many, there were like 20 people just in the lobby alone. And I was like, well, and so she's like, can we do can we go to restaurant B now? And I'm like, we're trying to, kiddo. And she goes, can we just go get barbecue? And I said, you know what, kid? That's exactly what we're going to do. Um, I'm just now realizing that my phone cut off and I'm not sure why, so, or where it cut off. Um, so I'm just going to leave you guys with this last story and then I'm going to head out of here. I actually just finished that last color. Um, so I may have to do some weird editing here if you're watching it and that's why. But uh, we ended up going to this barbecue restaurant for dinner because she asked for barbecue. We walk in. It was an old converted house. So she went into the bathroom by herself. Didn't want mommy and daddy. She was in there. The door wasn't completely closed. The lights were off. Came out. She's soaking wet. So we knew she had used the restroom. Great. Cool. She sat down for dinner. And then a few minutes later, she said, I have to go potty again. And we're like, do you really? And she goes, yeah, I really do. And I'm like, okay, Briar, go ahead, use the bathroom. And when you're done, we'll eat some more dinner. And she goes, okay. So she comes out like two minutes later and she gets all excited. She goes, I poopied. And we're like, what? And she's like, I poopied in the potty. Sure enough, she sure did. And everyone in the restaurant at that point heard her announce that she pooped. And she was so proud of herself. A woman came in to get her pickup order. And Briar goes, hi. And she goes, hi. And she goes, my name's Briar. I pooped on the potty. And the woman was like, oh, good job. And she just gave her thumbs up. And Briar was so excited. And then Briar's like, have a good dinner. Um, and it just, we ended up capping off the day with ice cream. It was fantastic. I really loved it. It was a great lead into Mother's Day. Um, and on that note, I'm going to get out of here because it looks like I only have like a minute left of film time, which is a little daunting. So I love you guys. Thank you so much for hanging out. I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. If you'd like to see more videos like this or, you know, nothing like this at all, please make sure to give this video two thumbs up. One real life, one virtual. Make sure you guys hit that subscribe button. Come join the Sparkle Squad. And while you're there, hit that notification bell. Yay. I do not operate on any sort of schedule. I operate on toddler standard time and I record my tiny human is sleeping or like today, sleeping. Thank you guys so much for being here and I'll see you in my next one. Bye, guys. <laughs>